Hello and welcome to the greatest trucking show in the world. I'm Brian Weatherly and welcome to the IAA at Hanover. Over the next two days on Commercial Motor Television, we're going to be bringing you the very best of the show. The new product launches, the future trends, the fads and the gimmicks. We'll also be talking to the real decision makers within the global truck manufacturers. You'll get all of that on Commercial Motor Television, brought to you exclusively in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. There's no doubt that the IA show at Hanover is a real magnet, not just to global truck manufacturers, but also to trucking journalists. But why should it be such a powerful attraction? Well, to answer that question, I've got my old mate with me, Andy Salter, chairman of the panel of the International Truck of the Year jury, and also, it just so happens, editor of Commercial Motor. Andy, what do you think of the show? Uh, fantastic, Brian. Here we are again, every two years, Hanover, combination of world commercial vehicle activity. Uh, it's fantastic. Any commercial vehicle journalist worth their salt has to be here. Now, I understand you're going to be in action this evening. What's all that about? Uh, we're handing over the International Truck of the Year trophy. Uh, can't tell you who the winner is, I'm afraid. That's a very closely guarded secret. But 8 o'clock this evening, we'll be handing over the, uh, the, the prestigious accolade to the winner. Well, we'll be joining Andy and the rest of the International Truck of the Year panel when they hand over the award later this evening. And rest assured, we'll bring it to you on Commercial Motor Television. If H stands for Hanover, it also stands for hybrids. And throughout this show, you'll find plenty of examples of hybrid technology. Not surprisingly, because the truck manufacturers think hybrids are the way to the future. You'd also expect a manufacturer like Volvo with impeccable green credentials to have a hybrid drive line on show. And here it is. Volvo's parallel hybrid system combines both diesel and electric power sources, but it allows the diesel engine, in this case Volvo's D7 straight six, and the electric motor to work independently of each other. On the road trials with pre-production versions of the Volvo hybrid truck show it's capable of delivering fuel savings of up to 35% which in turn means fewer exhaust emissions and lower noise levels too. What's more, the combined diesel-electric drivetrain has been designed specifically to harness and reuse the hybrid truck's braking energy, which makes it ideal for inner-city distribution work where you're repeatedly stopping and starting the truck. You're watching Commercial Motor Television in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. Well, I promised you plenty of hybrids at Hanover, and here's another one. A brand new prototype from DAF based upon their popular LF45. Like the Volvo, it has a parallel drivetrain system, diesel engine, electric motor. And energy stored from braking comes into this, the battery pack. And it's here where the breakthrough in hybrid technology has really happened. Twenty years ago, if you wanted a battery pack on a hybrid truck, you were looking at one that weighed up to three tons, which all but wiped out your payload. But now, modern day battery packs weigh 200 kilograms or even less, which means hybrid technology is suddenly more viable. As more and more cities throughout Europe introduce low or even zero emission zones, truck operators are going to have to come up with alternatives to conventional diesel powered vehicles. And here's where the parallel hybrid system can really play its part. Parallel systems like this one, developed by MN in conjunction with component supplier ZF. And for IAA, MAN and ZF have taken the hybrid concept just that little bit further. The little TGL hybrid developed by MAN and ZF features a clever electrodynamic moving off device. When the hybrid truck comes to a stop, both the diesel engine and the electric motor are shut down, reducing noise and exhaust emissions. But when the driver wants to move off again, he simply engages the forward gear whereupon the electric motor starts the diesel engine and simultaneously sets the vehicle in motion, but with far less effort and using far less fuel than with a conventional truck. So far, MA and TGL EDA prototype hybrids have clocked up more than 5,000 kilometers in road trials and feedback has been very positive. But perhaps the greatest attraction of hybrids is for inner city work where you need low or even zero emissions, electric power is perfect, while for interurban running where you need the range and performance you've still got a conventional diesel. In short, it's the perfect win-win partnership. Now, I promised you the greatest show on earth, and with IAA, I wasn't kidding. This hall around me is full of just one manufacturer, MAN. And believe me, this hall is absolutely enormous. 
A year ago, MAN unveiled its TGM range of light middleweights. And for IAA, it's got this wonderful truck, a TGM 4x4, available at 18 and 14 tonnes, complete with air suspension on the back axle of the 13-tonner, so it's kind on the load and on the driver over tough terrain. For the TGA, there's also a new, longer-legged back axle, which should help save fuel on the motorway. And for TGA tippers, MAN has developed a new DX off-road mode within its Tipmatic Auto Box. This allows you to rock the truck back and forth to help you get out of muddy ruts, something that up until now you've only been able to do with a manual box. Completing the lineup of MAN debutantes is this new crew cab available on TGL and TGM models that provide seating for up to six people and all their kit. It's no exaggeration to say that the Hanover Show is by far the most popular truck show in the world. Now why should that be, particularly at times when shows in Europe have been less successful? To answer that question, I have with me Dr. Bernd Gottschalk, President of the German Motor Industry Association, the VDA and the show's organizers. Dr. Gottschalk. Well, there's no simple uh, recipe of success. Uh, uh, if, it, uh, if there is one, uh, it's hard work uh, behind it and uh, uh, we try to be uh, very professional. We try to be more international than ever before. But the most important thing is um, the companies, uh, uh, and the firms have to look at this show as the most important uh, one and come up with new uh, and uh, interesting products and therefore we are happy to say uh, this uh, IAA again uh, is so important because uh, we have a new record of uh, new launches and new products and we are happy about that and uh, certainly we keep, keep on trying. Getting the best driveline in the truck has become the most important economic factor for operators. So where does ZF, the world's leading component supplier, see that demand taking it in terms of its own products over the next 10 years? To answer that question, I have Wolfgang Vogel, Executive Vice President of ZF. Competitiveness in our industry dictates constant improvement. Improvement in economics, improvement in safety, and the challenge in the future will also be environment. So we're working in all these sectors with automated transmissions all the way down to hybrid solutions. For global CV component suppliers, the world has long since changed in terms of the relationship between master and servant. Now, component suppliers are fully embedded within the manufacturing process. So what will global players like Arvin Meritor be doing to make sure they are even more embedded within the OEM production cycle? To answer that question, I'm joined by Arvin Meritor Chairman, Chip McClure. Well, thank you, Brian. I'm glad to be here. And let me first of all say that the first thing we want to do is continue to support our brake and axle business that we do have here in Europe already. But as far as how we're going to grow globally, part of what we look at from a growth perspective would be a growth in the emissions side with our commercial vehicle emissions. We just recently launched some product for DAF and for Iveco. In addition, we look to grow our aftermarket business here, which is an integral part of the commercial vehicle business. And then finally, in the specialty side with trailer and some of the other products there, we see some real opportunities there. But at the end of the day, this is a global business, and finally, we'd look to grow it globally. And I think the last thing as we look at it, I'm very pleased to announce the recent appointment of our new business unit president, Karsten Reinhardt, who clearly is going to help to take the business on a global basis. Fifteen years on, the Magnum still cuts a pretty impressive figure at any truck show. And the latest version here, the Magnum Vega, will certainly catch the eye of any visitor to Hanover. But it's what's inside the Vega that makes it really stand out for flagship truck operators. Let's take a look. Here inside the Vega, it's all about driver comfort. From this smart, leather-trimmed, slide-back relaxation chair to this multifunction unit where I can have a fresh pot of coffee, sit back and watch a DVD, even play a video game. Who says life's hard for drivers? Of course, the real news at the IAA at the moment is MAN's bid for Scania. But there's a question here that needs to be answered. Why does MAN want to grow any bigger? To answer it for us, we've got CM's associate editor, Colin Barnett. It's all about performing on the world stage. The phrase at the moment is achieving critical mass, which means big is beautiful when it comes to being a global player. Individually, MAN and Scania just aren't big enough to achieve the economies of scale that the big groups can achieve. Do you think that 
MAN will achieve their bid for Scania? Do you think the Swedes will be taken over by the Germans? At the moment, I'd say it looks unlikely. The bean count has been busy over the weekend. MAN made a formal bid for Scania on Sunday, which was rejected by Scania's board and its major investors. So, in the light of MAN's commitment not to mount a hostile bid, it's looking unlikely. Iveco's little daily van has certainly provided the Italian truck maker with much needed volume and it's really taken the fight in the light commercial sector to the likes of Ford, Renault and Mercedes. Indeed, Iveco now describes daily as part of its DNA. The new range at the IAA has the very latest Euro 4 engines as well as innovative design features from Italian styling house Shijaro, ensuring that comfort and driving quality have both been raised. What's more, there's an even broader range of chassis and driveline combinations, allowing operators to spec the ideal vehicle for their work, while exterior and interior detail changes include a new braking system and a dash-mounted gear shift. In recent years, Iveco has won notable sales success with its daily and Euro cargo light and medium weight ranges, but it's the heavy end that the Italian truck maker needs to do significantly better. How's he going to do that? To find out, we're asking CEO... Paolo Monferino. Well, traditionally we had a weak position in the heavy truck and uh, I think we, had, we did a good job in uh, building this new truck. Th this is the answer we are sitting in the, in the answer to your question. I think the Stratis is really a good product today. You have to convince your customer that uh, the position of Iveco today is a lot different and it is different starting from the fuel consumption. This is probably the best truck in Europe in terms of fuel consumption and reliability. As world truck manufacturers are having to comply with ever tougher emission standards and with Euro 6 and US EPA 2010 just over the horizon, what are global lubricant providers like Chevron doing to help the diesel engine manufacturers make their products ever more cleaner, greener and above all else, leaner? Based on our close working relationship with the engine manufacturers and our mutual customers, we expect Euro 6 and US 2007 emission standards to be similar to each other. To meet these emission standards, we also expect the increased use of global engine platforms and the common use of DPFs, SCR, EGR and ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel. Working within these design parameters, Chevron will focus its lubricant development on maintaining engine durability, after-treatment compatibility and an increased focus on fuel economy. As chairman of the ASTM Heavy Duty Oil Classification Panel, I also expect a global oil specification for these ultra-clean diesels by the time of Euro 6. Well, that pretty much wraps up the first day's webcast from the IAA Hanover Show from Commercial Motor Television, produced in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. Behind me, the CM webcast team are just getting ready to put it up on the web. So that takes care of today's program, but we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye.